Welcome back. I'm MTG Joe. We're back with another budget build series. This time we're going to be tackling Rakdos Aristocrats. Um, so I had actually created the first video originally, the budget uh, version of Rakdos Aristocrats, but it was right before M20 re released. So I thought I'd re-record it. Um, add a couple M20 stuff in since I was going to redo these videos anyways um, and kind of go through what the deck is. Um, so for those of you who are new to their budget build series, what we set out to do here is build three variations of a deck. Uh, the first is the budget version, which is ideally all commons and uncommons with the exception of the mana base. Um, so in this particular instance here, uh, we have the Blood Crypts and the Dragon Skull Summits. I'm actually short two Dragon Skull Summits. For, so in the interest of this video, it's actually more budget. Um, you do get the free Blood Crypt now with the new new player experience decks. So that's one fewer, uh, less wild card you're spending. From there, we go to a mid-budget variant, which is about... 10-ish rares and mythics combined, and then we build a completely non-budget as the best cards we could possibly throw in there um, and play it out like that. Uh, once I'm done that, I do a full write-up on the Arena subreddit, which is highlighting all the thoughts and choices of the deck and basically walk you through that. So it's really intended to kind of allow players to build as they start accumulating cards as opposed to just saying here's a tier one deck it gives you options along the way and a lot of the stuff with Rakdos Aristocrats is actually pretty cheap. So the term Aristocrats what does that mean? Um, so it was named after two cards uh, Cartel Aristocrats and Falconrath Aristocrats. It's probably my favorite deck of all time but basically it is you self-sacrificing your creatures for value. So what we set out to do with this deck is get a lot of creatures that benefit from dying um, and then play effects like that. So in the one drop slot, we have Grim Initiate, which when it dies, it amasses one. So we get a creature afterwards. So it's effectively two bodies for one mana. We have Footlight Fiend, which deals a damage when it dies. So it can block and then deal a damage. Makes kind of the combat math a little bit tricky for your opponent. Uh, Lazatuff Reaver creates multiple bodies when it ends. So you have your amass sub theme here. Uh, Orzhov Enforcer is something that your opponent likely won't want to block, um, but also uh, it creates a 1-1 spirit when it enters the battlefield. Then we have one of our payoffs for sacrificing. So we have Fireblade Artist, which is a 2-mana haste, 2-2, two -two, that we can sac creatures on our upkeep to deal 2 damage. We have Heart Fire, which if we sac creatures, we can deal 4 damage. Uh, we have a new card from uh, M20, Mask of Immolation. So when it enters the battlefield, you're basically paying two mana for a 1-1 that gets attached to this. And the equipment gives the creature the ability to sack this creature and deal one damage to any target. So you can actually, with Footlight Fiend, for example, uh, sack it and it deals two damage. Um, so it's a good way to kind of use as a sack outlet for two mana that can also target. Uh, we have a couple of Angrath's Rampage, again, with the sacrifice theme, and you'll see where it all pulls together. We have Plague Crafter, where we can get Sacrifice again, and this also hits Planeswalkers. And our payoff for sacrificing is Mayhem Devil. So whenever a player sacrifices a permanent, it deals one damage. So you're seeing a lot of themes here with Sacrifice. And then we have our boy Tybalt. Um, so we're an aggro deck, so shutting off incidental life gain, whether it be the vampire decks, the explorer decks, this is really good. And it creates devils, which when it dies, it deals one damage. So it's just fitting our theme of dealing damage, dying, dealing damage. Um, the mana base, uh, the only other lands we have is Memorial to Folly. I usually like this land in our uh, graveyard theme decks or like high volume creatures dying decks. So we've seen it before in like the Golgari graveyard decks, but here um, it recycles our creatures when they die. Uh, the sideboard itself, we have a couple cards from the new set. Uh, so we have Duress vs. Control and Davriel vs. Control. Uh, I like this as a way to get around like Cryocarnarium. Uh, I'm trying out Noxious Grasp, so this is one of the color hate cards. So it's a two mana, destroy a green or white planeswalker or creature. So buy Teferis, buy anything Explore Package, buy uh, Hydroid Crisis. So it hits pretty much all the, the big boys. Uh, we have Fry, which is another way to hate out Teferi. So we have a theme of we hate Teferi. Uh, and then Lava Coil is good catch-all removal. 
Um, so I'm going to run it through some games. Um, we'll play a couple best of three and then a couple one or two best of ones, depending on how long the matches go. That way you get a feel for any of them. I'm oh, sorry, for each of the formats. It's usually something that comes up. Uh, so just before we get started, quick favor to ask, um, if you haven't subscribed already to the channel, um, if you can, the little button in the bottom right hand corner, it costs you absolutely nothing. It's a free and easy way to show your support to the channel. Uh, presently, everything I do is out of pocket in terms of buying the cards, putting these series together. Um, I'm not looking to fund a entire lifestyle. I'm just looking to pay for the cards that I have to buy to make these series. Um, so reaching the certain YouTube sub limit uh, of a thousand subs helps goes a, to a long way to kind of build that up. Um, I am going to be doing a giveaway in the next couple days, hopefully, for probably a Liliana Dreadhorde general um, for my subs on YouTube. So uh, if you can subscribe, like I said, it doesn't really cost you anything and it can go a long way to help. So enough of my pandering. I really don't like to have advertisements or, you know, all that kind of commercial break. It's just something really easy to help out. Oh, no, sorry. We are not playing ranked with this deck. All right. Sorry about that. Okay. We'll play ranked with probably the mid-budget depending on what we get in there the mid-budget i'm going to put in some judith midnight reaper and probably priest and then the uh the non-budget will add in like probably cavalier knight or uh bantu and then maybe some rekindling phoenix on the top end all right so this hands it's a little awkward we could probably draw into land I like the cards we have. I just wish this memorial was something that came into play untapped. Okay, that's not bad. This is a block here. If they want to shock it, they can. Here I'm content just trading early on. This being mono red, they're gonna have chain whirler, so it's a little rough for some of our stuff. Okay, so Steamkin, now we can kill it on the spot. And then, so this way we have a creature that can block at times, or in this case it's removal. Um, an untapped land would be great here to drop down a Tybalt. Gutter Snipe, that's interesting. So unfortunately we have to take a turn off here. Probably Lazatef Reaver next turn. Them being able to untap with Gutter Snipe is going to be painful. Mind you, they're pretty low on cards at this point. Let's just go mana efficiency here. May also incentivize them to point stuff at Tybalt for the time being. So it looks like they have a burn spell in hand. Waiting on the opponent here. We actually don't have too much in this matchup sideboard. Okay, so they're just going face here. It's effectively a 1 mana of 5 damage. Yeah, we probably lost this one. Oh. Well, when they basically pay 4 mana to do 15 damage to you, 
Uh, I'm just going to bring in the lava coils here. Uh, da -da -da -da. You're okay. The heart fires don't seem that good here. And probably... No, this can get rid of planeswalkers, so I like that. Um, maybe just cut down a mask. Four mask might be too many. We might need to uh, adjust that number. Because they don't get better with the more you have, and we're not going to be like heavy mana. Keep this hand. Initiate into initiate is nice. We also have the option of the Blood Crypt coming in to play tapped on turn two. This has first strike, which can be relevant at times. Okay, so they don't have a play, which is nice. We might want shock in this deck in the main board. That's something we're missing. So on the fringe chance they block, which they likely won't. It's important to get that off the table. Always get kill Steamkins. They get too much value if you don't. Chain Whirler here will be bad. Here I'm just going to go wide. I want him to kind of waste a couple burn spells or at least us get some value. Chain Whirler hurts here. This matchup's probably hard for us. See if they block here at all. Oh, you know what I'm... F I'm forgetting our monkey friend. Okay, we gotta make a change after this. I forgot, um... The one mana haste uh, sacrifice it to deal a damage. That's an obvious one I'm missing. Okay, we'll make that change after this game. I think four masks, probably too many to start off with. Okay, so they are... Not concerned with Mayhem Devil here. It light up the stage. This is part of the reason you want to kill the Steamkin. Yeah, we're going to have to make a couple tweaks to this really quick. I think we need shock in the main. And this is the fun part with like the new set when it comes out. You get to experiment with some of the cards. Like mask in theory is good, but I don't think we want that many masks. Okay, so now they hit us. Okay, this is a 2-2. Two -two. I don't think we're winning by not attacking. War boss is a scary one. 
So they're hitting us for six here. They're holding the steam kin back. So I'm gonna sacrifice this because it deals three damage. See if they take a block here. They actually have to block. Unless they have a burn spell. Okay, so they take the block. Just... Oh, I forgot those just make this bigger. We could have done that differently. I always forget with the army token. Okay, so they give us good game. They probably have a burn spell here. Yeah. All right, let's make that change. We're missing our monkey friend. I had my, when I was building this deck, I only had my filters on for M20 to see the new cards that I completely forgot. Where you at? Fanatical Firebrand. And shocks. Let's tweak this a bit. All right, so let's go down a couple masks. Uh, probably go down the Angras Rampage. Four cards, uh, cut down initiate, cut down a reaver, cut down a Tybalt, just do three shocks, run it like that, 10, 14, 19, 21, can probably cut our curve down. Go back up to four shocks. Okay. Run it back. This is the thing too, like, I've played most of these budget build series, but a lot of them I've played the tiered deck, so I know kind of how the gameplay goes. I haven't played much of the aggressive red-black variants. Um, I've played more of the black-white aristocrat styles. Pretty much played every black white version you can. Knights, angels. I haven't done vampires yet. I've done every aristocrat variant. I've done control. Uh, probably keep. One too many lands here. So we're going to hang on to this if they drop like a wild growth walker. Okay, paradise druid. So they're not going to attack here or block here. If they do, I will be extremely happy. So we're doing this to be mana efficient. Next turn, depending what they have, we have the option of either double spelling F4 or playing this tapped, playing the two, getting the sack value. Okay, this is Sultai Elementals most likely or the Panarmonicon Yarrick deck that uh, Saffron Olive played. So here, Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Play that out and then hit our opponent. And then next turn we can double spell again. So this is a really good turn for us. 
this, when we get going, is a very powerful spell at Uncommon. When you have the theme of a lot of sacrifice effects. Because, like, for example, next turn, I could sacrifice this to deal 3 damage to the opponent. Okay, so the Assassin's Trophy here. Decline. So they did spend pretty much their whole turn to do that. And now we do have 8 points of burn in hand. So unless they drop like wild growth walkers, we're just going face. Risen Reef. So I'm doing this to get the flyer as well because it's evasive. So we're going to decline here. Ooh, Footlight Fiend's nice. Okay, so we got lethal now on our opponent. And that's how the deck functions. Got him. All right, so for this deck, uh, we want Noxious Grasp and probably Lava Coils. I don't know if we want Fry. Most of their stuff's green-based. Uh, the Initiate probably doesn't do enough in this matchup. Heartfire was good there. Mask of Immolation. They had a lot of one toughness. Probably Lost Tough Reaver doesn't do much here. We'll run it back. When you're playing Elementals, if you haven't played too much against the archetype, kill Risen Reef. Like the only reason we didn't kill Risen Reef there is because we had them at lethal. But if it was a normal turn, similar to like Steamkin, you kill that. You kill that dead. Uh, okay, so here. So the decision here is do we get a thread out on one and then not play anything on two? I think we just do a setup turn. So, kind of want to hit another land here. Start getting these play crafters going. I'm probably going to take the turn to kill that. A land to be good, so just play both. Yep. Yeah. Not going to give them any information. Let's see if they trade for anything here. That card's too much value. If we let it go unchecked, they beat us if they get a lot of mana. Okay, so it is the Yark deck. Okay, so we're gonna try to get him to block so we can lava coil it. They don't. Uh, so in that case, we'll get rid of the Paradise Druid. Six life. That's rough. Certainly is rough. Mm, and you have life link. We're gonna decline here. Okay. Just 
gonna take a Tybalt setup turn. This shuts off Yarek's life gain. We might actually need Fry. That is gross. They attack into Tybalt. If they don't have another creature, we can catch it with the Plague Crafter. Sweet. So I'm gonna do it like this. Because we get a free attack, basically. And this leaves behind the bigger body. And in a pinch, we can start cycling this Memorial of Folly to get back our Plague Crafters. Seems like they're out of creatures. Wonder if it's just removal in hand. Could be a second finale. X3. Risen Reef. I'm just going to kill this anyways. Cool with that. Thought they let it live, just to try to get some card advantage. Salvager of Secrets. That's an interesting one of with Finale, get back Finale. Oh, get back Ritualist set. Um, having seen Ritual, we are going to sacrifice this. To deal damage there. Uh, I'm going to save that for after the board wipe. Just pass the turn here. I'm going to get back the Memorial to Folly if they don't play Ritual Asset. Okay, they go Cloudkin here. Healer does buffer their life total a bit. Uh, we can get back I might just get back the fiends or the Fanacle Fire brand to shoot this down. It lets us play a couple spells in a turn. Because then here we shoot it down and then play Fire Blade Artist. Okay, second Lava Coil. I'm just going to force their hand, let them use the Ritualist Sit. Okay, the Assassin's Trophy. Don't think I have anything double black. I'll probably just get a Swamp just in case if I want to like... No sense of exposing it. Fine, put into play. Get rid of that.
Here we're just trying to be aggressive without over committing to the ritual asset. If I can do something to like trigger this, what are they getting back, Yark? Okay, they got Yark back. I think we're dead on this one. Playcrafter, yeah, I'm just gonna concede on this one. I need the fries in for Yarek. Get the fries in. The flying's not bad. We can go over the top. Shock's okay. Maybe cut down one and one. Question is, is if I want Davriel. They go wide here. That play crafter is probably not good. Davriel's a way to kind of get chip damage in. This might be tough just because they're playing like a very synergistic deck. Um, not the most aggressive, but we have removal, so I'll keep it. We're also on the play here. We do have the engine of Mayhem Devil and Mask of Immolation. Ponin is deciding with their London Mulligan how they want to proceed. So we're probably going to go Enforcer first. It's something they're less likely to want to block. Tybalt's a nice play too. Because with this, if they have the, like, 0-3, they won't want to block it. Um, this plays around Ritual of Soot better. It's like an Assassin's Trophy. I think we go Tybalt. If they have the um, the one mana gain three, it shuts them off. So it's just incidental life gain. My friend is here to help your pain. See if they block any of these. They don't. So this sets us up nicely. If they do have Ritual, we're not really losing much. They'll likely attack into Tybalt. We will sack and get rid of it. So all these like one ones now effectively become, they can sack on demand and deal two damage. Finale for two, so likely Paradise Druid is my guess. Yeah, so they're short mana there. So them getting Paradise Druid means they're likely not going to Ritualist it here. So I'll take the turn to get the Mayhem Devil. If they do Ritual, then we have Fireblade and the Spirit from Morzov Enforcer.
Congrats, you have a 1-2. So here I'm going to do this. Going to attack with everything. And then just equip this. And turn. So here if the opponent taps Paradise Druid, I'm going to kill it. But also, if it tries to attack Tybalt, we can protect Tybalt for the life gain. And then we also have a Hasty Fireblade as just another creature. Meteor Golem, sure. What are you targeting? So this deals 3 damage. Sweet. Yeah, got him. So took down Sultai Elementals, which is one of the more expensive decks. Get our XP for the day. Uh, they changed the system, so you get your weekly XP now, up to 15 wins. Uh, so continuing with that. Uh, so we'll play a best of one. See how that goes, and then wrap up the video. What have you find folks been playing in this new standard? This is the first deck I've played all M20 release other than a Risen Reef deck or Mono Red when I hate the world. Uh, here we'll keep. I'm gonna go Footlight into Firebrand. Would have been nice if one of these were red so we could have triple one drop by turn two. Versus Mono Blue, this hand's really good. What you gonna do? You gonna opt? You gonna sp try to spell pierce my my monkey? They are thinking about it. Okay. Opponent can't beat two power on turn two. Okay, so we're not going to really count that one. So that's how you win games. You have to play two creatures, one mana each, by turn two. Your opponent will play an island, which is technically the most powerful play in Magic. We're playing Sate Pork. Uh, hand works, technically. I think we mulligan. Okay. Uh, we will put back one drop, two drop, three drop. Try to draw into land in our first couple turns. I wish you were a monkey. Uh, so... I'm gonna see if they block here. Okay, so free point of damage.
So this kills mana for them. We're not going to win if they get a wild growth walker going. Jeez. I don't think we could win. We have a hard enough time with an explore package when you have a Soren going that gives everything lifelink. We're an aggressive deck, we don't beat Soren. Like even if we got Tibbled out there, it's too late. They start getting that going. And then once like Wild Growth becomes like a 3-5, we can't beat that. Lanwar Elf is a powerful turn one play for sure. This is a very aggressive hand. I like it. So I'm going to leave it Swamp so they think we're not as aggressive. Cool. Cool, cool. Just free XP. Getting closer to those free packs. All right, so I'll probably just call it quits there. We got quite a few matches in there. Um, so I'll come back with the mid-budget version so we can get a feel for it. Uh, like I said, if you haven't done so already, if you can hit that subscribe button, free, easy sports channel. Thanks for, thanks for watching and have a great one.